Hello, Carrie here with the copy of Heidi. It's actually an abridged version of the original and it's intended for children to read. But I have this copy and it's going to be good for an altered book because the signatures are sewn in and that's much better than the glued in signatures. It's got some gorgeous illustrations. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. I'm going to use that um, later on. Uh, you may or may not see me use it in this video. Uh, so I'm going to tear out a couple of pages from the centre of each signature. And initially I go through and do it once and then I decide to go through and do it a second time. And the idea is to reduce the bulk of the book so that when you start adding things to it, by golly, they do get bulky. Um, it's, it's easier on the book if you take some out at this stage. And also there's a limit to how many pages you can work in before getting tired of the subject. Now this is for the Round Robin group that I did the last My Time book with and they're all doing children's, we're doing children's books, children's classics. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing those. I'll tell you more about those as they come through and I'll show you as well. So here I am going through to find the centre pages and tearing out. So I took two out of that one. Sometimes a bit of paper gets stuck. Taking that one out as well. Lovely illustrations. Some of them I take the illustrations out and I'll be using those again. Do you remember the Heidi story? I um, had to refresh my memory. I've actually got a copy now, a full, the full version. And I remembered that she was an orphan and she goes to live with her grandfather in the, um, in the mountains. And I remember she makes a friend of the boy called Peter who has, um, he's a goat herder. Taking out that one. And then I couldn't remember, quite remember what happened. Well, I vaguely remembered some things from it. But anyway, what happens is she stays with her grandfather and she's um, of a decent age. She should be learning schoolwork, but for some reason her grandfather is anti-religion and anti-schooling for some reason. So she doesn't get an education when she's with him. And then she gets sent away to, well... Oh, actually, before she goes to live with the granddad, she actually lives with her, her grandmother and aunt. Her grandmother dies and her aunt goes and finds a job somewhere. So I think her aunt finds her a position as a lady's companion for a girl called Clara. And Clara is disabled. Um, she's wheelchair bound. And I think they get on really well. I think they all find Heidi, Heidi quite charming. Anyway, so she stays with Clara, but unfortunately she gets very homesick. I remember that bit. She gets really homesick and she starts doing sleepwalking and strange things like that. And then she gets really, um, really unwell. And so they decide they're going to send her back to the, um, to the home with her grandfather. And she goes back home and they're so happy to see each other. And then he allows her to go to school now because he's realised that she'd missed out on important education. And I think he eases his strict stance on religion as well. So um, that is what I can remember. Oh, yes. And then Clara comes to stay. I don't know why. I think they all decided it'd be good for Clara to have some fresh air. You know, we always believe fresh air is good for us. It really is, actually. <laughs> so Clara comes to stay. But remember, um, it must be really difficult getting around a mountain with a wheelchair, I come to think of it. Anyway, she comes to stay. Uh, Peter doesn't like the interloper. He feels a bit, you know, unhappy about it. So here I am at the moment. I am gluing some pages together because although the pages are nice and thick, actually, which is quite surprising uh, for a modern book. So quite often a modern book, the paper quite thin. But anyway, the paper is lovely in this. So it is not an antique book by any means. Anyway, so Clara comes to stay. Peter gets a bit miffed. And in a fit of nastiness, he chucks her wheelchair off a mountain. Which is a bit extreme, isn't it? Can you imagine? And so they decide to teach Clara how to walk. And bless her, she does. So I don't know what sort of illness she had that she wasn't able to walk. I don't know. I'm assuming it was something like polio in those days. Anyway. So that's how that book ends. Now, there are follow-on stories. And in fact, there's more by uh, the actual author him, herself. And then there's another person who's written some more follow-ons. I used to have those. I no longer have them. There we go. So lots of pages being glued together there. 
So tell me if you remember the story, Heidi. And there used to be lot. There used to be a television program when I was growing up with it, a TV series, and I think it was a dubbed one. So I don't think it was a British one. I can't quite remember. I remember loving that as well. And I remember seeing a movie with Shirley Templin. That must have been ancient. In fact, it was old when I was a youngster. So, and um, apparently there have been other movies as well. I haven't seen those. Yes, it was a favourite of mine for some reason. I think it's the goats. Yeah, they got me with the goats. <laughs> and you'll see some goats appear in this um, video. <laughs> So here I'm doing a flap out. So I've sandwiched the flip, the flap between two pages there. So that's nice and secure. And I'm not on this video, or maybe on this video. I'll do a bit of sewing. Uh, so yes, I sew down some of these. I do add some pockets. I'm just gluing at the moment. I do add a flip up as well. And I add some pockets as well. So mostly it's just gluing though. I'm just thinking whether to do a flip up at this stage, just looking through those pages, see if there's something I could use. So yes, I'm trimming a page down, get rid of the rough edge there, I'm going to use that as a flip up. And what I'll do is again, I'll sandwich it between two glued pages. That'll hold it nice and securely, plus I sew it so it's well and truly secure. And I think, I haven't started on this video, I don't start any of the pages yet, but I think the flip up one is the one I'm going to be starting with. I've got an idea for that. So I need to glue that last page because it's partially glued already anyway. So I have to glue that. I had to do that on the front as well. There's one page where it's sort of attached there. That's it all glued. And now I'm going to add some things like pockets and, yeah, side pockets and corner pockets. Or oh, I'm doing another flip out on the other side, but I'm doing it, so turning it upside down. And I'm going to have it flipping on the left in, you'll see, like that. Like that. I'm going to say that to reinforce it. I'm doing another flip out on that side as well. That's a good way to use some of the pages I've taken, torn out. Adds a bit of variety to the book as well. So now I'm doing a pocket. Go to glue it together first. a little bit at the top but I would be sewing it to reinforce it as well and later I'll be punching it right now I think I'm going to make the side pockets now yes I make two I'm not going to overdo, overdo the pockets because they don't get used quite so much in a round robin I've noticed But I do enjoy putting tags and things in them. So that's two. I'm just going to glue them together. And cut them neatly. Glue them in lightly and then sew them, sew them later. one and that's the other so I'm going to pop that there oh here's my um, hole punch so I'm going to punch that corner and use a larger punch for the other side one I did I just thought it suited it better a bit of glue along the edges just to hold it in place before I sew it. So that's one on the left. Now I'm going to do one on the right hand side somewhere. 
going to put it there. So now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine. I'll do a little bit of sewing. It's always a bit of a struggle with the book, but it's doable. I sped that up, I wasn't going that fast. The harder ones are things that are really close to the spine. These out outer edge ones are easy enough. And the, the stitching is um, it's also nice for adding texture as well. Now, this is the signing in page. Because I've got the owl on the right hand side, I normally would put it there. But I'm just going to sign my name on that. I'm actually going to be attaching this to the left hand side. I'm using the strong 3-in-1 glue because I'm a bit worried that a uh, uh, glue stick won't hold. Now, here's my goat. And here I am using my new Christmas pen. This is an ink pen, but it's made of glass. Isn't it lovely? And I'm using acrylic ink. That's FW acrylic ink. And I'm amazed at how much ink the pen holds. Because it's got a spiral. Um, it holds the ink in the spiral. It's very clever. So this goat... There, that's the first time I've had to refill it. Isn't that amazing? So this goat, I, did, I drew out a few goats. Tried to figure out what sort I liked and this is the one I went for. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw and paint it. And then I'm going to shrink it down onto a card. And I'm going to do a card for each participant. And they've got to name their goat and sign it every time it goes past them. I love the goat's little beard. So he's... Adding some swirly bits to his beard. So that's the inking part done. And I'll go to watercolour, use my watercolours and colour it. Oh, I'm giving a quick blast with a hairdryer just to make sure the ink is thoroughly dry. Acrylic ink is waterproof, but if it's wet, it will smudge as I learnt to my cost. I'm just testing it slightly with the rubber. Then I'm rubbing out, rubbing out the rubber marks. There, that's fine. Now I'm going to start off with his ears and put some pink in them. Brush was a bit dirty, that's better. Just going to put a little bit of pink in there. I feel the insides of his ears should be pink. And then I'm going to oh, that's messy as well. Ugh. I think I'm picking up some ink on the paintbrush there. I need some fresh water. Right, back to it. Now I'm going to just put a bit of a wash of what is this now? Yellow ochre or raw sienna? I think it's raw sienna all over. He looks a bit mean, doesn't he, with his eyes? I find it fascinating the way their eyes go sideways. But they're grazing animals. They don't, don't need to be able to see very very far, do they? And I'm going in with a little bit of... Now, what colour is that? That's sepia I've added to the mix. Just to have some darker areas now. Yes, I put the sepia in place of the black. I used to have black in the pan that I never touched. So now I've got sepia for my very dark colour. If I mix it with something like ultramarine blue, I'll get practically a black. Because I tend to use burnt sienna for that, really. 
So I'm just, just giving some form to the horns. Trying to soften the edges a bit. Now going in with a bit more darker colour. I give form to the eyelids. It's such fun painting quirky little things. It takes me several layers actually to get them the um, finished painting. So bear with me. It'll be worth it in the end. They turn out really well in the end. I have a little herd of goats for people to sign. So what would you name a goat? What would be a good name for a goat? I mean, cows are like Gertrude and Daisy. What would a goat be called? Especially a Swiss goat. Hmm. And are they all male? Do the female goats have horns as well? Mind you, a herd probably would consist of female goats because they use them for milk. I drink a bit of shadow to the eyes and the ears and that is that's the cerulean blue I'm using there something sepia for the nose and now I'm shaping the face a bit the head Did some fluff to the ears. Well, this video is intended to go up on Saturday, so if all goes well, um, I wish you a happy new year. 2021 is going to be a lot better than 2020, of that I am fairly certain. But you never know. Trust nothing, I say. Trust nothing. So now I'm going over the um, I did some more dark darks. Softening with the brush. So this video is going to go up on Saturday. Then on Monday, I'm going to do a very short video with the prompt for the week, the art journal prompt for the week. And then my next video after that will be Wednesday, which will be a proper full video. And will be a continuation of this, uh, uh, this altered book, Round Robin preparation. There we go, it looks a bit more hairy in the ears. I like hairy ears. Not in mine, not in humans, in animals. Humans with hairy ears are kind of scary.
do like to have fun, quirky things in the altered books. There's looking a lot more dimensional now. And I'll just put a bit of colour in the eyes. And these are going to be green. Sometimes they're amber, sometimes they're green. Very pale green. And I'm just doing a little bit of touching up with the pencil. decided to add a little bit of reinforcement to the ridges and the horns. Give them a bit of depth. Give a quick blast with a hairdryer. Don't need to do much, but I don't want to rest my hands on it and, and um, smear anything. So I'm just going in and just reinforcing some of the darker areas with a dark brown pencil. These are actually watercolour pencils. I think they might be WH Smith ones. They're not the best, but this is just for photocopying or scanning. I used the watercolour ones because my actual coloured ones were downstairs and I was too lazy to go downstairs and get them. <laughs> oh, I've just realised, reviewing this, I've realised I've not put a glint in the goat's eyes. I think I've already scanned and printed off the cards, you'll see them in a bit. I think what I'll do now I've realised this, I'm going to add just a, a spot of light in each eye. Times four. There's four cards now. Just tidying up the nose area. That's uh, looking a lot better. Just adding a bit more shadow to the eyes. That's better. Lovely. Looking more realistic. Well, it doesn't need to be realistic. It's not meant to be realistic. I think one of the other things I want to do a little painting of is of a sled because I can use it in this journal and I can use it in my winter journal because my uh, Snow Queen has a, will need a sled, won't she? So that's something else I'm going to be drawing. I'll just draw simply for this sort of thing. It's just fun. Just adding a bit more roundness to the head, adding more paint to indicate the more round shape of the head. Now, I don't really want to get too much dark in the hairy bits on top of the head because I want them to be remain light against the darker areas of the horns. Just blotting off a bit of colour there to give the nose a bit of shape. I think what I'll do when I do the, the, the little glisten of white in the eyes, I might do a little bit on the nose as well because it'll be shiny. Right, so here's the, this is me after I've scanned them. So they go in that pocket there. So I've made four. I'm going to round off all the corners. And then I'm going to give them each an individual treatment. Well, you know, some are going to have eyelets and some are going to have tabs on top, basically. And all going to have different ribbons and things. So they're all going to be unique. Although they're going to look the same. They're all going to be unique. So I'm just going to put some, just some, I've got um, these lovely acrylic pens that were a Christmas gift uh, from Becca. Thank you, Becca. <laughs> and I'm just doing a bit of gold around the edges. Just to finish them off a bit. So here they are, all dry now. I'm just going to add this little tab of sorry silk onto one of them.
I'm going to just use a bit of glue for now, but I'm going to sew it as well. Just like that. So that's that one. And now I'm going to cut out a circle of some text paper. I'm going to fold that over and use that as a tab. Gluing two pages together to make it firmer. So I fold it in half like that. I'm going to pop it on like so, but I need to put some glue on. Good thing is, there's a bit of time to allow for repositioning. And once that's dry, I'll go around the edges with the gold pen to match the rest of that tab. Now, I've done one with sari silk and this one with the sheer ribbon. And which matches the goat's eyes. And I've sewn that tab on there. So that's all of those. So in the next video, I'll see further what I do on this page. So this is the end for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.